Sometimes it's hard to measure an employee's passion for the company or their job in particular in, in the tasks that they do in that job. But I tell a little story of something I did a number of years ago when I worked um, as an executive in an uh, eyeglass manufacturing company. An employee came to me and he asked for a raise in pay. So I asked him to give me a few days to uh, pull his file and read his file and uh, try to understand what he did better in the company. And if he could go away and come back those couple of days and be prepared to discuss with me uh, what he did, uh, the importance of the company, and how he felt he improved in his role over the last 12 months uh, that would um, create benefit to himself individually and to the company and those around him. So we discussed that and that would um, affect my final decision. So during the time I pulled the file, I noticed a few things about this gentleman that for a protracted period of time, he had uh, an abhorrent attendance record. So when we, when, we, um, when, he, when he was here doing his work, the attitude was somewhat um, lacking. So attendance is lacking, the attitude is lacking. Generally speaking, he could do the job. There's no question about his ability. It was more towards the desire side. So we, we got together a few days and I asked him, so, okay, so what are you looking for uh, exactly? And he gave me a percent of a raise in pay. And so, okay, that's um, somewhat in line with the general cost of living increase in the last uh, year or two. Um, a little bit aggressive, but it's within reach of that. So I said to him, you know, it, you know I'd like you to do something for me. Can you please um, describe your job? I said, I read your file and I understand the job description, but I want to hear from you what you think your 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 task is, your role in the company. Um, you know, and so he described it for me what he thought, and I listened to a very dispassionate discussion. And what became clear was that he lacked understanding of his role or his, or his importance in the internal supply chain didn't really understand or couldn't really identify who fed him, per se, in the process, where his work kind of came from. And he had uh, an absolute lack of understanding of who relied on him. So everybody in the company is, is, plays a key role. There's people you require to do a great job that enables you to do your job properly, whatever that might be. You rely on them to do the job well so you can do your job well. And then there's those who rely on you to do a great job so they can do equally well in, in performing their tasks. That executive level, mid management level, an employee level, um, a, a factory worker, office worker, receptionist, truck driver, warehouse worker, and finance, operations, sales, doesn't matter. We all play a role in the company, and we need everybody to have their oar in the water, uh, rowing at the same time, the same speed, get a, a collective strength. So, so when so I talked to them, I said, okay, some good news is some bad news for you. Um, the bad news is you're not going to get the raise you asked for. So obviously a little dismay in his face. So the good news is I could potentially give you twice as much money as that over the next year. He said, what do you mean potentially? So well, it's a couple of things. First of all, I need you to go away and understand your role in the internal supply chain. Who you, who you count on, how you can help that person do a better job so they feed you better quality work, more timely manner, etc. And the flip side of that coin is who you feed people, who, who you feed in the supply chain, who relies on you. Understand what their needs are and how you can help them out. So this goes into understanding who's around you, how, how they affect you, how you affect them. Um, can you help them get better at what they do? So I said, you know, this, on the basic part, I said, we discuss that at a later date. That's an education type thing. Um, and learning on the job. So, but the immediate question you have is about your actual raise and pay. I said, so we can we can do more than double what you asked for by a very simple equation. You know, um, coming to work every day. He was shocked, obviously, but but coming to work every day, people around you in the supply chain get to rely on you. But not coming to work every day, we're now adjusting and modifying. It's like having a car, and say so every Friday you have to change a flat tire. Okay, it gets routine, you learn to work with it, work with it, and you learn to manage it, but you get kind of fatigued with that after a while. And pretty soon you build in systems that just accommodate that. It affects the supply chain uh, and how, how you work. Um, you know, your preferred way to go. So when you when you buy a business or a franchise, it's the exact same thing. Understand who's around you, who's in the system, uh, who your employees, 
uh, management level, operations level, uh, your accountant, for example. How can you help them do their job better? How can they work better for you? That's one of your primary goals. If you help them succeed, you will inherit to succeed by default. Pretty simple question, right? So I advise people, if you're looking at buying a business or a franchise or how to improve your, your skills and your job, uh, display that passion. Passion is not you standing at your desk and singing the mantra, the mission statement every, every, every morning or anything like that. It's not a group hub tech meeting every Monday morning or Friday morning necessarily. Passion is the simple stuff. Have passion for what you do. Do a better job. Help those around you. And that gentleman, by the way, he left that company. I saw him a few years later. He's working as a manager at a fast food restaurant. Um, I'm not a big fast food eater, but I happened to be in this place one day for certain reasons. And I thought I recognized him, but he recognized me very quickly. He came over. We had a great chat. There's a smile on his face. You can see a smile on his eyes, actually. He's, he's glee in his eyes and the passion in his voice. He loved what he was doing. He's passionate about it. And you really tell. So it was good for him. So a modern employee at one place who put in his time, got a paycheck, paid the bills, just kind of killing time. He left the company with some rouse, found a real passion. He's excited about that. And he was happy as could be. So when you're a franchise owner, do the same thing for your staff. Find a way for them to improve themselves, do a better job. That's part of your passion. Your passion for the business, your passion for the employees, passion for the industry. So I help people find a franchise. And I'll do like most real estate agents do, just make a sale. Here you are. Um, can you afford to pay for it? Get some funding. Bob's your uncle. You're done. I help you find your true passion. True passion drives true success in the long term. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.